three sets for women. The first set is the tricep, so if Katie could please turn around. Ask the client to hold their arm at a 90 degree angle and then measure in centimeters from the acromion man process down to the elbow. Katie is 35 centimeters long and want to make a mark at the halfway point. Now this is a vertical test, so you want to make your line vertical and then cross it horizontally to mark your spot of testing. Go ahead and relax. And our second test site will be the abdominal. Again, measuring in centimeters and on the same side of the body, I mark two centimeters out from the belly button. The last side of testing is the superiliac. You'll find the natural line of the iliac bone and go just superior to that and make a line in the direction of the bone, so it's a diagonal test. Wherever you made your marking, you're going to pull the skin out just a little. Try and separate the fat from the muscle. Take the skin caliper and place it at the base of what you've pulled out. Let it sit for a second before you take your reading. The number's on the dial, and then press the button and take it away. Next, you'll ask the client to turn around and continue on the next two sets. Again, a couple pinches, pull the skin out, open the caliper, place it at the base, take your reading, open it again, and take it away from the client. You'll do each side three times, rotating between the three. Make sure you don't do all three at one side at one time. Now we are going to show you each of the skin fold sites uh, that you will be performing in class. So the first site here is the abdominal site. This is going to be a vertical fold, two centimeters to the right side of the umbilicus, or the belly button. Our next site here will be the chest site. Uh, this will be on a male subject, uh, which is a little bit different when you're talking male versus female. Uh, again, this is going to be the male measure. It's a diagonal fold. It's going to be one half the distance between the anterior axillary line, so that's the line in the upper part of the shoulder on the front side, and the nipple. Again, one half this distance. You basically create an imaginary line Take that half distance, and then you're going to take your pinch. Our next site is going to be the mid-axillary. This is going to be a vertical fold and it's going to be on the mid-axillary line at the level of the xiphoid process of the sternum. So the xiphoid process is located at the bottom of the sternum. The mid-axillary line is basically an imaginary line that runs down the side of your participant. To start, you're going to have your subject raise their arm up and place it on your shoulder. This is going to give you access to the site that you're trying to measure. At that point, you locate your xiphoid process. You draw a line all the way over till it meets with the mid-axillary line, and then you can take your measurement. Okay. Our next site is the subscapular. This is going to be on the back side of an individual, so they should face away from you. It's going to be a diagonal fold at about a 45 degree angle, and it's going to be one to two centimeters below the inferior angle of the scapula. All right. As you can see on our subject here, this, the scapula is a little bit difficult to locate, so one of the ways that you can help locate this inferior border is to have the, your subject place their arm behind their back. As you can see, it helps basically pop the scapula out uh, from the skin a little bit more, making it easier to find that inferior border. Once you locate it, your subject will then relax their arm, and then you will move your one to two centimeters below, keeping in mind that, once again, that this is a diagonal fold.
The next site is the suprailiac site. This is going to be on the front side of the individual. Once again, this is a diagonal fold, and it's going to be in line with the natural angle of the iliac crest. So that is basically the crest of the pelvis. It's going to be taken immediately superior to this. Uh, however, you're going to need to locate this iliac crest, and the way that is possible is to basically palpate. Make sure that your subject is okay with this. You identify what you're going to be doing with them. Palpate for the peak of the iliac crest, and then you are going to be able to locate your site, make your mark, and take your measure. Our next site here will be the triceps. This is going to be on a vertical, vo vertical fold on the posterior midline of the upper arm. Your two sites that you need to identify are the acromion and the olecranon processes. The acromion is within the shoulder. The olecranon is within the elbow. You identify these two sites. You basically measure between these two sites. Identify the midway point. Make your mark and you can take your measure. Once again, making sure that you're staying on the posterior midline. Your subject should also not flex their arm. It should just hang freely to their side. Our final site is going to be the thigh. Okay. This is going to be a vertical fold uh, right in the area of the quad on your individual. However, positioning of your subject is very important as the thigh muscle is very large, making it very difficult to get a accurate pinch uh, on an individual. So one of the ways uh, that we can properly position a subject to help make it a little bit easier is for them to take their weight off their leg. You place a chair or a table next to your subject, allowing them to, to balance themselves, and then you ask them to put all their weight onto their left leg. All right? So there should be no weight, no flexing of the muscle uh, of the right leg before you go to take that measure. After you've done this, you're basically going to be looking for an, uh, the anterior midline of the thigh, so the front line um, that goes down the middle of the leg and you're going to measure midway between the proximal border of the patella, so that's the top part of the kneecap, and the inguinal crease. Okay, that's the crease basically where the leg meets the pelvis. You can use a tape measure to find that midline. Once you found it, make sure you're on the anterior border and take your measure. Alright, so what you'll be seeing here now is the slight differences in the chest and subscap uh, sites for the skin folds on a female participant. We're going to start with the chest site. So normally, um, as we talked about previously with a male, it's between the um, shoulder and the nipple of the participant, and it's about halfway between that uh, imaginary line. On a female, however, it's only going to be one third of the distance, more closer to the shoulder. Um, as you can see, we'll be marking the site there so we can repeat our measurements appropriately. Uh, you always want to ask your uh, participant to make sure that she's okay with the site and the placement. You can ask for their help and ask her to slide their sports bra off to the side so that make sure that you can get to exactly the right site that you need. And uh, now we'll show the subscapular site. So you'll have your subject uh, face away from you. And same position, um, you know, it's the same site as the, the male uh, site. However, once again, with females that wear sports bras, as they go through this testing procedure, you may ask them to uh, hold the sports bra out of the, out of the way so that you can appropriately identify the site. So you'll find the inferior border of the scapula. Um, and then locate your, uh, your, locate your site, mark it, 
and then you can take your measurement. And uh, now we'll show the subscapular site. So you'll have your subject uh, face away from you. And same position, um, you know, it's the same site as the, the male uh, site. However, once again, with females that wear sports bras, as they go through this testing procedure, you may ask them to uh, hold the sports bra out of the, out of the way so that you can appropriately identify the site. So you'll find the inferior border of the scapula um, and then locate your, uh, you locate your site, mark it, and then you can take your measurement. Well, the way we do it is we always have the person stand and we do three measurements. Uh, with the woman, uh, they're, like I said, they're different than a man. The first one is the basically the suprailiac uh, mm -hmm. measurement. And by the way, again, what I, what I recommend with this, as I did on the male, is to actually mark the areas with a pen or a marker. Um, that way, if because what you should do is you really should do you do all three measurements, and then you probably want to repeat all three measurements, and maybe even do it a third time and take the average of the three. If you really want to get, if you really want to be accurate here. So, all right, the first one. Let's. You know what, I'm, I'm going to show the second one first. The reason I'm going to do that is let's come up by the camera here, and, and it doesn't matter what order. Yeah, you it doesn't order. matter. I want to make sure we can see it. Can we see that? Yeah. Uh, what you're going to do is here's her little. Let's turn this way. Here's the X where we're going to mark it, halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. What you want to do is pinch about two or three inches of skin and bring it together like that. And this is a vertical one. And right below the pinch, about a quarter inch, you're going to go ahead and put the calipers and let them squeeze on the skin. Can you pull that down? Oh, sure, yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Because I'm, again, two to three inches squeeze. And I'm forming a mountain here. And halfway between the top of the mountain and the base of the mountain, that's where I'm putting the calipers. So right below the pinch, I squeeze and like that. And you can see this is giving me a number of 14. Did you see that, yeah. Brad? It turned out good. Okay, good. All right, let's come back over here now. All right, I think we're still doing okay. Did you want to write that down, Brad, 14? I'll, I'll get it. You'll get it. He's got a great memory. <laughs> All right, this one is right above the hip bone. It's, it's the super iliac crest here. I mean, the iliac. So right, uh, uh, right above this bone here, you'll feel a bone right here. Right above, we're just gonna put this down a little bit. We got an X there. Now I'm squeezing here. Again, two to three inches, squeeze it together. And I'm letting the calipers again grab on. And that is 20, or I mean uh, 18. What was the first one, Brad? 14. 14? I'll get it, Bob. Don't worry. I just don't think he's going to remember it. He doesn't have that good a memory. Bob, All right, I, we're going down now. I will amaze you today. 14 and 18. 14 and 18, yep. Now halfway between the hip and the knee, in the mid-thigh. Again, I'm going to squeeze. Right on there. That one, that one gives Lonnie a little, little thrill there. 19. Okay, last one is 19. All right, I'm going to write that down. You didn't use a permanent marker on there, did you? Don't <laughs> worry about it, Bob. So, 19? Yeah, 19. Oh, now we got to do math, Bob. Okay, you, got, you know your gazintas? 4 goes into 8, 8 goes into 9. 51. Lonnie, you want to take, take over the camera now so we make sure we're looking at something? <laughs> All right, 51. The triceps measurement is performed with a vertical fold on the posterior midline of the upper arm, halfway between the acromion and olecranon processes, with the arm held freely to the side of the body. An X will be marked at the halfway point. Another X will be marked one centimeter above the first.
skin will be pinched on the top X and measured with the calipers on the bottom X. Be sure to wait one to two seconds before the reading. 20. We will rotate measurement sites and perform the measurements twice. For the super iliac crest, at the natural angle of the crest, one centimeter above an uh, angle will be made. 21. At the X, a diagonal fold will be taken. And waiting one to two seconds, the measurement will be read. 17. The thigh measurement is performed with the vertical fold on the anterior midline of the thigh, midway between the proximal border of the patella and the inguinal crease. crease. An X will be marked at the halfway point. Another X will be marked one centimeter above the first. The skin will be pinched on the top X and will be measured with calipers on the bottom X. 13. Okay, we need to find the uh, skin fold site for the mid axilla. Um, in order to find that, I need to find uh, the cross section between the, mid, the midway point between my iliac crest and the middle of my axillary, which is my armpit, and where that intersects horizontally with the xiphoid process. So firstly to find the xiphoid process I just palpate up the body, I need to find where the ribs are, right? so I can find my ribs and I find where those ribs meet. So I'll feel the point where my two ribs meet and then slightly below that I'll actually feel the little spongy uh, xiphoid process. We want to put a marking right on the tip of that xiphoid process with a little stroke. Now, to turn our patient slightly around, we need to find this midway point between the armpit, or the axillary, and the iliac crest. So again, I take my tape measure. It's a bit of line of sight to find that middle of that armpit there. I take my tape measure down to my iliac crest, and I'm looking for a little marking that is directly in line with that, with the, um, the xiphoid process. And again, just stop this way, I'm looking for that horizontal intersection. So I take my tape measure and I form a horizontal line directly across where those two meet. That is my mid axilla skin fold site. When measuring the head for hood sizes, place the tape above the eyebrows and make sure to measure around the widest circumference. Make sure the tape is level all the way around the head. When measuring the neck, measure around the middle of the neck. You can use the Adam's apple as reference. When measuring the armpit, have the diver extend their arm at 45 degrees. Feel for the shoulder bone and bring the tape up and around the armpit. To measure the bicep, start three inches down from the underarm, rotate the tape, and measure the widest circumference at this height. You may want to take this measurement a few times. You may also want to measure both arms as the diver's dominating arm may be slightly bigger. When measuring the forearm, measure around the biggest part of the arm. You should take this measurement multiple times and use the biggest measurement you get. You should also measure both arms as a diver's dominating arm might be slightly bigger. To measure the arm length, ask the diver to extend their arm 45 degrees and place the top edge of the measurement tape 
in the middle of their armpit. Extend the tape along the arm and measure to the top of the wrist bone. To measure the chest, put the tape at the height of the nipples and make sure the tape is level all the way around. Ask your diver to relax their arms and take a deep breath. You should use the measurement with full inhalation. When measuring the waist, measure at the navel. This is generally the narrowest part of the waist on someone who's slimmer or the largest part of the waist on someone who has a larger belly. Make sure the tape is level all the way around. When measuring the hips, have the diver stand sideways so that you can see the widest circumference of their hips. Make sure the tape is level all the way around and that you're measuring at the widest point. Ask your diver to position the object between their legs so the top edge is, sits comfortably in their crotch. So how does it feel there? Good. So at the right height. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that the object is squared to the wall as well as at the right height for the diver. Does that feel good? Yep. So once your tool or object is at the right crotch level and squared against the wall, um, you can take the over body measurement. So start from the same point you used for the shoulder height um, and make sure that you're about halfway between the front and back of the diver's shoulder and at that exact shoulder point where the shoulder meets the neck. Put your tape down here. Make sure your diver's not looking down. <laughs> and drape the tape over the body and bring it straight down to the edge of your tool. Don't go into the body. And if the diver has a larger belly or bust, you can curve around it, but don't go over and in. You really want to get the length straight across the body and straight down to the tool. I like to check this measurement two or three times, and you can also do it on both sides. This is a very crucial measurement. This is also one of the measurements that is the most often wrong. So please measure multiple times. When measuring a female diver, start in the same position and bring the tape straight across the bust and down to the object. You don't need to go specifically over the fullest part of the bust, simply straight across the body. Make sure to take this measurement multiple times to ensure it's accurate. To measure the thigh, measure around the widest part of the upper leg. Make sure the tape is level all the way around. And you can measure multiple times and use the largest measurement. To measure the knee, find the diver's kneecap and measure just above it. Make sure the tape is level all the way around. You may want to measure both legs and use the largest measurement you get. To measure the calf, find the widest part. You should take this measurement multiple times and use the widest measurement you get. You should also measure both legs and use the biggest measurement you get. Make sure the tape is level all the way around.
The top of boot measurement is measured 10 inches up from the ground. This is the level at which the dry suit and dry suit boot are attached. Measure the circumference at this level. This is a very important measurement because the joint between the dry suit and the dry suit boot does not stretch. So if this measurement is too small or not at the correct height, the boot will not fit properly. To measure the ankle, feel for the diver's inside ankle bone and measure just above it. You may want to measure both legs and use the largest measurement you get. Measure the length from the tip of the longest, usually the big toe, to the back of the heel. With your diver standing straight, place the tool on top of the diver's head and square it to the wall. Once you've got the level, mark your tape. Next, we'll measure the head height. For this measurement, I'm going to ask you to move over just a little bit. So I have the tape right about at the level of the diver's shoulder. And now you're going to use your same tool or object, and you're going to place it right where the neck meets the shoulder. It's usually about where the collar of the t-shirt stands, um, but just make sure that you find that place and square it on the diver's, the diver's shoulder and square it to the wall and then you're going to mark that level. And let's do the other side, just for fun. So if you can move over, perfect. And then just move a little bit, okay. And then you're gonna place it in the same place. Sometimes you'll have a difference between the two shoulders, but oh, you're actually pretty straight. And mark on the wall again. Make sure your diver has taken off his shoes, that he's wearing close fitting, thin clothing, and have him stand straight right over the masking tape on the wall. Uh, you'll need an object that has two straight edges. You can use a binder or a board. Um, in this case, we're using a set square. For this measurement, I'm going to ask you to move over just a little bit. So I have the tape right about at the level of the diver's shoulder. And now you're gonna use your same tool or object and you're going to place it right where the neck meets the shoulder. It's usually about where the collar of the t-shirt stands, um, but just make sure that you find that place and square it on the diver's, sh the diver's shoulder and square it to the wall, and then you're going to mark that level. And let's do the other side, just for fun. So if you can move over, perfect. And then just move a little bit, okay and then you're gonna place it in the same place. Sometimes you'll have a difference between the two shoulders, but oh, you're actually pretty straight. And mark on the wall again. Ask your diver to position the object between their legs so the top edge is, sits comfortably in their crotch. So how does it feel there? Good. So at the right height? Mm -hmm. And then make sure that the object is squared to the wall as well as at the right height for the diver. Does that feel good? Yep. Okay, now if you have someone here who can help you, I, I prefer to use three people, but if there's just the two of you, ask the diver to hold the object with their legs. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Make sure the diver is not looking down. Does that height still feel okay? Yep. If the diver is looking down or trying to hold the object, it will, the measurement may change. So when the object is squared, then you can hold, and can you just step forward just a tiny bit? Perfect. So as your diver steps forward, you can reach behind them and mark the wall. Okay, and now you can release. Ask your diver to position the object between their legs so the top edge is, sits comfortably in their crotch. 
So how does it feel there? Good. So at the right height. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that the object is squared to the wall as well as at the right height for the diver. Does that feel good? Yep. OK. Now, if you have someone here who can help you, I, I prefer to use three people. But if there's just the two of you, ask the diver to hold the object with their legs. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Make sure the diver is not looking down. Does that height still feel OK? Yep. If the diver is looking down or trying to hold the object, it will, the measurement may change. So when the object is squared, then you can hold. And can you just step forward just a tiny bit? Perfect. So as your diver steps forward, you can reach behind them and mark the wall. Make sure your diver has taken off his shoes, that he's wearing close-fitting, thin clothing and have him stand straight right over the masking tape on the wall. Uh, you'll need an object that has two straight edges. You can use a binder or a board. Um, in this case, we're using a set square. With your diver standing straight, place the tool on top of the diver's head and square it to the wall. Once you've got the level, Mark your tape. Now, I like to check my measurements two or three times, so please step forward, relax a little bit, and step back, and let's measure again to make sure. If I don't get the same measurements, I will measure two, three, or four times. This is really crucial to get the most accurate measurements possible. And again, square the object to the wall and to your diver's head, and mark. So this top mark equals the diver's total height. So on the male, you're going to have the person standing up and uh, relaxed, of course, and we're going to do all the measurements on the right side. And we'll start off with the first measurement is actually halfway between the nipple and the front of the, the uh, armpit. And we already put an X there, which I think is not a bad idea, because that way, if you want to repeat the measurements, which isn't a bad idea, um, you'll know exactly where you did it last time. Mm -hmm. So sure. now this on this one, Brad, you're going to do a diagonal pinch, as they call it. So uh, running diagonal here. So you're going to take your fingers, and this is you could do this yourself, sure, but it's going to be a lot easier if somebody else does right. it for you. Right. So if you take your inches, uh, your fingers, and go about two to three inches apart, and then you pinch like this diagonally. Are you, you are you close enough, Lonnie, for this? Do you want to come in closer on this one just for a little bit, or are you okay? Oh. She looks pretty confident, Bob. Yeah, she does. <laughs> let's come forward, Brad. Let's, uh, let's oh, come. There we go. Right. Just to show for one of them, anyway. So I'm pinching for two to three, you know, two to three inches together. Now, what between the base of the mountain I've created and the top of the mountain, about halfway between there, and about a quarter in, a quarter inch from my pinch, right out over that X. That's where I'm going to put the, the calipers. So I'm just going to let them rest there, see how reliable that is, and that is a number 12. Mountain? You said mountain? I got a mountain I, I created a fan, mountain, huh? So, all right, number mountain. one is 12. That's a mountain. I would like to see a molehill. All right, Brad, all let's right. go ahead and do an abdominal one here. Brad's got a nice scar for us here. 1967 appendectomy. They used butter knife to cut into you. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> so same thing. Now, this is going to be a vertical one. So I'm pinching vertical right above the, oh, it's supposed to be one, three quarters inch, three quarter inch away from the, uh, to the right of the, of the uh, belly button. Umbilicus. Um, umbilicus, yep. Yeah. So three quarter inch, I already measured it out, put an X there. Now I'm pinching again. Brad's got a little more fat here. And I'm going to get in there. And what do we got here, Brad? 29. Oh, 29. That is a mountain. That's my winter fat, Bob. I haven't yeah. got into my training. Seriously, do this in August, and it'll be a different story. Which, you know what? This brings, it brings up an excellent point, Brad. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to do this body fat analysis. You want to see if you're improving, because if you're losing weight, you might be losing muscle. You don't know. Right. Um, and also, if you're gaining weight, you might be gaining muscle and losing fat, Right. So, which is very desirable. So this gives you a starting point, a basis, on which to gauge how you're doing. So. Yeah. All right. And they're tough, too. They yeah, won't these break. these are tough. They won't break. Okay. Okay. All right. This, this mark is halfway between the knee and the thigh, I mean, the, and the hip, right in the middle of the thigh. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Again, it's a vertical one. Vertical meaning up and down. I'm going to pinch right above the X, and then a quarter inch below my pinch. I'm going to let this settle in there, halfway up the mountain. And we got, I'll give you an 11 on that one, Brett. Where you're going to want to go is you're going to look at, see, she's got a nice, a nice scapula, you know, thing there. Somebody who has a lot of fat, it's almost like just straight across, and there, you can't really find where the subscapula is. So you want to find it here, and it's right at that angle where it starts to curve this way. So the, the pinch is going to go along that angle, okay? So Kendra's going to do it. And you always pinch on the right side of the body. Well, you know, let me see if uh, how you're... Oh, you know what? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you just sort of step to the side like that. So that's okay. good. Yep. So you can see how she's sort of getting the fat there. So that looks good. So she's using her left hand on the... I'm going to actually get close since I can... So we'll get close since I can move this. So see, so she's using her left hand to hold the pinch, and now she's reading... And so we she, want to place the calipers in the middle, so not at the base or at the apex. Right, and I'm going to get really close and show that. So you don't want to get too close to the body because that's where it flares out, and you don't want to get too close. What she was talking about was you don't want to get too close to the edge here because then that is going to be where it's narrowing and the calipers going to slip off. So you want to try to get to where the fold is parallel to each other. That's the best place. And so and then you put it on there, and then she lets go And then do you want to zoom in on that? So I have... Seven, uh, now about 16 milli mm -hmm. millimeters. Yep, 16 millimeters, okay, good. So then she lets go. And so, so we're not gonna do this, um, you know, we're not gonna do this, but it, you know, you're supposed to do it twice, but you don't wanna do it right away again because you gotta let this all reset again. And so you usually go through all the sites and then measure it again, and they should be within one or two millimeters of your first reading. So that's a subscapular. Let's go to the, to the uh, tricep. Okay, so the tricep, the tricep is, yeah, actually, yeah, keep, yeah, there you go. So the tricep is a chromium process and electrode on there. So you're going midway between those two bony protrudence. Oops, I didn't show it there. That point there and that point there. So you want to go halfway between. If you're being really technical, you can measure it. I just eyeball it. So halfway between is about like right, right there. Okay. So you're doing, a, again, a vertical fold right in the middle of her tricep. Her and it's right on the midline of the tricep. It's not off to the side or inside. It's, it's right on the posterior side. And Dr. Medina, you might mm -hmm. want to explain how it is okay to pinch kind of hard. Yes. And that is to be expected. That is, when we were doing this in her class... Uh, the other day, the students were howling, <laughs> and when I hear that, then I know you're pinching right. So it should be not comfortable. <laughs> All right, so that looks like a good pinch, and again, nice fold there, okay. And we're at 15 millimeters. See, now she's reading it that way, so she's reading it with the numbers facing up, so good. Very good, Kendra. So that's, yeah, so you want to really get a firm pinch. I mean, when I was doing this in class myself uh, as a student, the teacher was leaving red marks on my arm, on my body. And actually, I have a few. You can, you can actually see it. Yeah, so you right. can see red there. Well, she has a nice Filipino tan skin. We can still see some red there. Okay, so that's the <laughs> tricep. Right. So now we're going to go to the front there, the bicep. So we go ahead and just turn on there. Now the bicep is, I think it says here, it is like one millimeter above. I just want to make sure I get it right here, what I'm saying. One centimeter above the level used for the tricep. So if the tricep was here, you're gonna come around and be a little bit above there. So, but basically it's about midway, midway of the belly of the, of the bicep. So, and it's also in the very front, front of the belly, and so here she look good. So she's getting a nice, good, so you wanna feel that fat, and you wanna pull it away from the muscle so that it's, you're not pinching any muscle. You don't wanna include muscle in there, also to make it. Mm, I have to say, it's a little hard to pinch. We'll I think it's a good grab, here. though. That does hurt. Okay, good. <laughs> nope, let me get on this side here. Okay. So she's got a good, so yeah, that's a nice. So her hand, left hand is nice for pinching the vertical fold. She can read the, read it very nicely. Okay. So we're at a six. At a six, okay. All right, so that's the bicep. So now the next one is the chest. And if you look on the in the book here, the chest is different for the male and females. And so basically for the female, 
it's only one third from the axillary and the nipples, so that axillary is your armpit. So it basically, for the women, it's basically like right about, right about there. And again, that might be a little bit uncomfortable. You gotta sort of pull, pull really good. And we're going at a diagonal. At a diagonal, right. Okay. All right. Actually, more of a diagonal this way. This there way. you go, there you go. Okay. Yes. There you go. So you want to be nice and firm, give a good pull on that, and if you see your client wincing, then you know, oh. Is it? It, no, is it? it's okay. a good pinch, it's a good pinch. Yeah, that looks like she's got a good Christine. fold there. Good, okay. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky how you see, so she's reading it nicely, good. 12. 12, okay. So that's that, that was that. Now let's go to the supraileum. So the superilium, you know, you find the iliac crest, and so it's, you know, it's the bony, your hip, and you find where is it sort of starting to slope down. So right there, see that? It's sort of starting to slope. I can feel her hip bone right there. So the slope down. So what I'll typically do is I'll put my thumb sort of against, against her hip bone where it's going down, and then I pinch that way. So that, that'll give you the right angle of the, of, the, of the fold, it should be going where the same way as the angle of the hip bone, the iliac crest is starting to slope down. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So this one, you know, she'll have to pinch it really good and pull it away. There's some muscle there, so. Okay, you so. Feel the iliac crest, there you go, there you go. Nice, there you go, see, so good. Look at all yep. that fat. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi is in fine shape, so they, all these students will be doing this. So look at how Kendra is reading it, so that's, that's how that's proper technique, good. Okay, so that's super iliac, and now we'll slide over to the abdominal, so that it's right on the belly button, and it is, what does it say here? It says uh, two centimeters to the right of the belly button. So again, you know, I don't, if you want to be real technical, you measure it out, uh, but just goes right, yep, and it's a vertical fold. Oh, what are you talking Good about? Pinch. And this Good one you want to read a hard time Good. It. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're doing it right. And on guys, this can be really tough because they might have a lot there to pinch. Nice, nice. So we're at a 30. 30, okay, very good. So that is all for the upper body. I think we got everything right in the upper body. Oh, we didn't get the mid-axillary. Uh, the oh, mid-axillary. Yes. So that is the line. See, you can see the seam of her shirt actually right there. So that is the mid-axillary line and it's basically right above, I think they say the sternum. Vertical fold, yeah, at the level of the xiphoid process. So basically, if you know where the xiphoid process is on the front, you'll just come around and it'll be right, basically it's right in the middle of the, of the side there. Vertical fold, so, and you can use, how, see how Kendra's using two hands, so that's what I often will do to get a really good, nice fold, and then. Good grab. Good grab. And you, can, good you can find, you can feel the thickness of the muscle underneath, mm -hmm. underneath what you are grabbing. Right. Don't be gentle, you want to make sure you get a good firm, that's, that's good. Okay. All right, so that's the mid-axillary. So now we've got all the upper body. So now we're gonna go for the lower body. There's two in the lower body, so. Okay. And I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna lower this so I can, nope, oh, anyway, I will do it like this. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna go on the front of the thigh. So the front of the thigh, it's, you have them stand, put their weight on their left leg, okay. and so then that way they can bend their knees slightly so they're taking their weight off their leg. And so it's where the bend is, inguinal uh, crease at the top of the patella. So basically it's midway between the inguinal, oop, I didn't videotape that, inguinal crease there where the bend is of their thigh and then the top of the patella. So it's gonna be right about there. And again, when you guys do this, I actually want you to measure it just so you get used to it. So use a tape measure, measure that out, and then tape the exact you know, middle of that. We're just eyeballing it here. So, okay, so, and the thigh can be quite tight on people so you want to really get a good pinch of the, the fat as much as you can, whatever fat is there, and pull it away from that thigh muscle. And on guys, sometimes this can be very painful and difficult because their thighs might be really tight. Nice. 
and she's wearing tights, so it can, that can be challenging. If they're wearing pantyhose, that can be tough. Good, see, that was good. So she was able to get that. Now the last one is, the turn side was this way, Gigi. Oh no, the other way. So the last one is, so same positioning of the leg. So put your, put your weight on your left leg, and then your right leg a little bit more forward now. And then you're gonna get the calf. Now the calf is not on the back, it's on the mid, in the middle, the medial side of the calf, and it's basically at the largest point of the belly of the calf. So you just look at somebody's calf, see where it's the biggest, it's like right about there. You're coming here, so you're coming, so think of the ankle, and you're straight up there, and that's where you're gonna pinch. So this is gonna be a tough one. Uh -huh. I don't know if, because if, if, she doesn't have a lot of fat there, so you got to really pull hard to grab it. Sorry, oh, that's, your, that's good. That's, that's, that's Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> nice pinch. Yeah, we're giving a little uh, there deep you go. tissue. See, so she's, she's, she's nice read. Okay, there you go. So that, and that's a good technique. So Kendra did very well. Bravo. Yes, and how did it feel? Could you feel her? Yeah, uh, yeah it was hurting. Okay. <laughs> she was pinching perfectly. Good. Introducing our model, Maddie. Site one, biceps. The anterior surface of the biceps, midway between the anterior auxiliary fold and the antecubital fossa. Site 2. Triceps. A vertical fold on the posterior midline of the upper arm, over the triceps muscle, halfway between the acrosion process, the bony process on top of the shoulder, and the olecranon process, which is the bony process on the elbow. Site 3. The subscapula. The fold is taken on the diagonal line coming from the vertebral border to between one and two centimeters from the inferior angle of the scapulae. A diagonal fold about one to two centimeters below the point of the shoulder blade and one to two centimeters toward the arm. Site four, the suprailiac. A diagonal fold above the crest of the ilium at the spot where an imaginary line would come down from the anterior auxiliary line just above the hip bone and two to three centimetres forward. Now we'll start with the neck portion first. So you'll take it at the centre of the neck. Don't hold it too tight, not too loose, just about so that it is there is a comfort. So first we take the neck measurement, then we take the next is the bust measurement. Just see that the tape is uh, really well adjusted and on the biggest round of the bust we will be taking the bust measurement, again not too tight and not too loose, just about it so that she feels comfortable. Now we move on to the waist measurement. Waist measurement is often taken wrong at the lower part of the waist that is here. But that is not where we count as the waist. This portion, which is the narrowest part of the rib cage, is taken for your measurements of waist. This is how you take the waist measurement. Then we move on to the abdominal girth. This is exactly taken on the belly button. Then we move on to the hip. So you adjust your tape properly. And on the widest part of the hip, you will take the measurement and we will take it at the site. So this is the part where you will take the measurement. See that the tape is really adjusted straight and not up and down, you will get a wrong measurement. Then we move on to the measurement of the arms. So you can take any arm or you could measure each arm to exactly know if you want to know what is the difference between the two. So first we will start with the upper portion of the arm. This is taken, if this is the upper portion of the arm, you take it right in the center. So you, this will be the portion of the arm where you take the measurement. This is the upper arm measurement. Then we take the mid arm measurement. The same thing, it is in between the mid arm that is somewhere over here. And then we take the measurement of the wrist. This is how we take the measurement of the upper part of the body. And now we'll take the measurement of the thigh. So I'm going to choose the middle portion. So if this is the thigh portion, I'm going to choose the middle portion of it. This will be the part where you will take the measurement for the thighs. Then we'll move on to the calf measurements. It will be in the middle uh, level of the lower uh, limb. 
So this will be where you will take the calf measurements. Well, I'm Tracy Haynes. I'm here at Appalachian State University in the Exercise Science Department. And... Hi, I'm Grayson Johnson. I'm a student at Appalachian State University. And we're just going to go through how to perform a seven-site skin fold measurement. And so we'll go over a couple different um, angles with how to actually take the measurements, a little bit with caliper etiquette. So first I'm going to start off with my caliper. And personally, I like the line calipers, and we'll show the differences with some of the other caliper options that we have. But personally for me, with a smaller hand, I can really handle the line a little bit better than some of the plastic larger calipers. Now these are typically made for somebody who's right-handed um, so that you can hold it here with your thumb on the trigger and then you're able to read the, um, the measurement here. If you're left-handed it doesn't really work properly because you'd have to tilt your head underneath so for all of you lefties out there you just have to be a righty for the day. So first thing is really just kind of talking to your subject. For these measurements, um, most of them are going to be done kind of under the shirt. So we typically will ask our subject first if they mind taking their shirt off. It is possible to do measurements over clothing, but you will get a little bit of, of skewed results. So Grayson, do you mind re removing your shirt for our measurements? So the first measurement that we're going to take is going to be the tricep. And so all of the measurements that, we gonna, that we're going to do are going to be on the right side of the subject's body. So just make sure you're always using the subject's right side of the body. Even when you turn them to and from, it's, it's not your right side because if they face you know, towards you versus away, it will change. So we're going to start with Grayson's right side. And for the tricep, this is actually one where we are going to measure with a measuring tape. So the location for the tricep is going to be halfway between the acromion and the olecranon process. So basically the end of your shoulder here and your elbow. So what I'm going to do is measure from the top of the shoulder to the elbow and find the halfway point. So we're right at 16. Now, Typically, it helps to make a mark on the body so that when you go through and measure again, you don't have to measure a second time. So I'm going to take that halfway point, put a measurement, and then when we measure the tricep, we really want to measure it on the back of the arm, the actual tricep. So now I'm just going to transfer this mark right to the back of the arm and then we'll have you come back and see the side of it. Alright, so we've measured the halfway point and we transfer it to the back of the tricep. Now what we do is we're going to end up measuring right where we put that mark. So I'm going to grab the skin fold with my two fingers and I'm going to grab above the mark so that when I put the caliper on it's actually on this mark here. So I'm going to grab and try to separate out the subcutaneous fat from the muscle. 17. All right, our next measurement is going to be the subscapular. So to find this, you're going to kind of find your subject's scapula, so your, their shoulder blade. So sometimes on here for Grayson, I can find it pretty easily, but some subjects you might not be able to. So a little trick that you can do is ask your subject to place their arm behind their back. And you notice when that happens, it kind of pops out the shoulder blade a little bit. So I can find the edge of that shoulder blade. So you can go ahead and relax now. And the shoulder blade kind of comes down and then back up. So we're going to measure one inch away from this medial border of the scapula. Now you'll notice a little bit of difference measuring males versus females, or females are typically going to have a sports bra on. And they tend to kind of come right down this region here too. So the spot where I want to measure is actually right here underneath her bra. So kind of proper etiquette with doing this is first letting your subject know that you might have to move their sports bra a little bit. And the way to move it would just be down a little bit. What you don't want to do is realize to get to that location, you don't want to lift from the bottom up. We just want to kind of slide down slightly. So is it okay if I slide your sports bra down a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So I found that area. I'm going to come down about an inch. And this is going to be a diagonal measurement. And relax. 
All right, so another measurement that we have is gonna be the chest, and this is also going to be a diagonal fold. And so this is the only one that varies slightly between a male and a female. Where for males, you're gonna measure halfway or you're gonna go halfway between the nipple and the armpit or the crease of the armpit. For the females, you're gonna go a little bit higher. You're only gonna go about a third of the way and closer towards the armpit. Now this one, you can typically just eyeball. And also we, we have the issue of the sports bra being in the way as well. So this is another one where you may not have to necessarily move it, but you're just gonna let your subject know where you're measuring. So I'm just gonna be grabbing on the side of um, your armpit right about here. So we're just gonna measure close to kind of the armpit here and it's a diagonal fold, pulling away the skin and the subcutaneous fat from the muscle. And relax. Okay, so for the mid-axillary measurement, this is gonna be on your mid-axillary line, so that means in the middle of your armpit coming down. So if you had a shirt on, you could see it's kind of the line of your shirt, but for measurements, we obviously don't have your shirt on. So it's gonna come straight down from your armpit, and where we're actually gonna take that measurement is across from the subject's xiphoid process, the end of their sternum right there. So once again, for a female, we actually have the sports bra as almost a marker for there because they typically sit right where your xiphoid process is and it comes right across here to your mid-axillary. So what I'm gonna do is first be able to get to the region because when you're standing there, your arm is down. So kind of we have a couple options. Grayson, you could either put your arm kind of in front of you like this or you can kind of put it behind you a little bit this way, whatever's more comfortable. What we wanna avoid is having your subject kind of put their arm up and stretch, and that'll just displace the skin a little bit. So this is perfect. I can get to the region, she's not stretched out. So coming straight down from her armpit, right across from the xiphoid process, you may, to pinch, need to move the, the bra a little bit up, so I'm just gonna move this up a little bit if that's okay. A vertical fold. All right, so for this measurement, we're gonna do the super iliac. So we're talking about your iliac crest on your hip and super is just above it. So we're gonna try to locate that iliac crest. And it actually helps if you have your subject help you out because sometimes you, actually, you can't tell maybe where their hip is and you don't wanna be poking and prodding. Sometimes people just have really high hips that you can't really tell by looking at them. So Grayson, if you could find your hip bone for me, great. So here's the top of her iliac crest. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure one inch above the iliac crest. And this is gonna be a diagonal fold. And so we wanna still have it in the front of the body. We don't wanna have it right here on the back. So it's this front, this iliac crest, this diagonal. And we'll go about an inch above. So our next measurement is gonna be abdomen. So this one's pretty simple. It's just gonna be one inch to the right of the subject's navel. So just find the belly button. We're gonna get a one inch to the right. So I'm gonna grab top sometimes. I kinda of get down, but. So for our last measurement for the thigh, this is gonna be the second one where we actually are gonna physically locate the halfway point just because it's a larger area to measure. So this is gonna be on your subject's right thigh and it's gonna be halfway between the inguinal crease, which is kind of the groin here, and the top of the patella, which is the kneecap. So what I'm gonna actually do is have Grayson help me out. Um, just want you to kind of lift your leg up a little bit and that way I can just kind of find a, the crease of where, um, of her leg. So now you can go ahead and put it down. And I'm actually gonna have you hold the measuring tape right there. Halfway point, 44, get 22. And we're just gonna mark that halfway point. So once again, you don't have to go back your second and third time through and actually measure it. One time is good enough. And so the thigh, I think, is one of the trickiest measurements to do on a subject. The body fat really varies per person, but sometimes it's, it's kind of harder to pull that skin away from the thigh. One thing you can do is kind of have your subject kind of rest most of their body weight on their left leg and so that this one is just kind of slightly supported on the ground. So I'm gonna once again measure above 
And this one you might have to pull a little bit more and actually pinch your subject to get that measurement. And on females, this is typically going to be one of the higher numbers for body composition. Now we're gonna do a waist circumference measurement. So we're gonna have a measuring tape and we want it to be a spring-loaded tape so that we can have some tension while we're doing this measurement. Um, inches or centimeters, doesn't matter, it depends what your chart is in. We're just gonna do this in, in inches. And so where you're gonna measure for the waist circumference is gonna be between the ribs and the hips, whatever part of your subject is smallest. And that will vary depending on person. So sometimes it may be, for example, Grayson right in here is where she's smallest, but for somebody else, it may be higher or lower. So this is one where you'll have to adjust it depending on, on body type. So I'm going to, if you can hold that with your hand, I'm actually gonna kind of walk around her to first do this so I don't have to give her a hug and possibly make it uncomfortable. So now you can go ahead and relax. And so we're just gonna hold the tape together and put a little bit of tension on and see where the number zero, where it crosses the next line. Just make sure too that for some of these measurements that zero doesn't always start right here at the end. Make sure you see where it actually starts as your starting point. And then we get a measurement. So another way to do a, a measurement, I showed before how you could have the subject hold it and you kind of walk around them. Another way is to open this up and kind of put it over the subject, kind of ask them, kind of like they're jumping rope, and put it over your subject, and then you have the tape to go around. And as we said before, you're gonna pick whatever spot is smallest on the subject. Now, if you're not able to tell, or maybe the person is just kind of straight down, you can actually take kind of multiple measurements, kind of a high, medium, and, and low one, and see whichever one ends up being the smallest, and then that's the measurement you would go with. Could you take your shoes off for me? Make sure the upper and lower weights are on zero before you have the patient stand on the scale. The lower calibration bar is divided into 50 pound increments. The upper calibration bar is divided into pounds and quarter pounds. The longer calibration lines indicate the pound increments, and the shorter calibration lines indicate the quarter pound and half pound increments. Add the measurement on the lower scale to the measurement on the upper scale. The result should be rounded to the nearest quarter pound. Slide the movable calibration rod upward until the measuring bar is well above the patient's apparent height. Instruct the patient to step onto the scale platform with his or her back to the scale. Open the measuring bar in its horizontal position. Carefully lower the measuring bar, keeping it horizontal until it rests gently on top of the patient's head with the hair compressed. The measuring bar should be at a 90 degree angle with the calibration rod. Keeping the measuring bar in a horizontal position, instruct the patient to step down and put on his or her shoes. Hold the bar in a horizontal position until the patient has stepped off the scale. Turn and read the height measurement from the top to the nearest quarter inch marking at the junction of the stationary calibration rod and the movable calibration rod. Hi, this is Dr. Dale Wagner, an exercise physiologist in the uh, Human Performance uh, Division of Exercise Science at Utah State University. We're here today to do a body composition measurement. We're going to be using skin folds for this measurement. Skin fold is a field method technique. It's a small device. We can take it with us anywhere. So that's one of the big advantages of Skinfold. Um, it's a portable, uh, portable instrument. Also fairly low cost relative to the other instruments that we have. A good set of Skinfold calipers might run about $250. Um, so relatively inexpensive compared to some of our laboratory methods, which might be $40,000. On the Skinfold measurement, what we're really doing here is we're taking a, a we're measuring the subcutaneous fat, that's the fat right underneath the skin, and a, a dull fold of skin. So we have, we're, we're gonna take a pinch, and in that pinch, there's gonna be a double layer of skin and the underlying fat that's caught between that skin. Based on that information, based on the subcutaneous fat that we get, we're making an estimate or prediction about total body fat. There's a variety of sites to take. I'm just gonna show you one site um, so that you get the idea. Um, so we're going to do a measurement on the tricep site. So we're going to measure the right side of the body. And so I'm going to take a measurement 
it's always good to have good anatomical locations here. So let's go to the right arm, and we're going to take a measurement on the tricep, so the back of the arm. So my anatomical landmarks for the tricep are midway between the acromion process on the shoulder and the olecranon process on the elbow. So I'm going to find the acromion process just by feeling for the end of the bone. And can you bend your arm at 90 degrees for me? Makes it easy to find the olecranon process. And so I'm going to go midway between there. And so for her, that's right there. I want to be on the back of her arm, so I just take my tape measure around to the back to make sure I'm in the right location. And then I'm going to put a little mark so that I know the spot that I want to measure. From here, I'm going to put my fingers just about a centimeter above that mark. I'm going to take a fairly wide pinch. I'm going to pinch and pull. And as I pull, the muscle is going to sink back down into the bone. And I'm just going to be left with subcutaneous fat and the, um, uh, the double fold of skin. Just relax your arm. So I'm going to pinch and pull. I'm left with my fold. I put the calipers right below my fingers. And I wait for about three seconds before I read the dial on the caliper. And that's it. That's all there is to skin folds. And then we would do a multiple set of sites. Uh, there's a variety of equations. There's a lot of different equations. Some equations are what we call generalized equations. Therefore, they're based on a large age range of people, maybe 18 to 65 or so. Um, then we have other equations that are very specific. For example, uh, we have a female athlete equation, which we might use on this subject. Um, the important thing is to use the right equation for your client. Um, there's a variety of skin fold sites. Some common typical sites will be the triceps like I just did here, um, an abdomen, superiliac, thigh. They're also very common, uh, common skin fold sites. Again, the advantages here, it's a low cost field method, small, portable. Uh, the disadvantage is it requires a certain amount of technique, a certain amount of skill. It takes quite a bit of practice in order to be able to get um, to become competent in uh, using the correct anatomical landmarks and pinching with the right amount of force in order to get an accurate measurement. The tricep skin fold site is going to be halfway between the olecranon process in, of the elbow and the acromion process of the shoulder, and it's going to be on the midline on the back of the arm. All right, so midline of the back of the right arm, and this is a vertical fold. The chest skin fold site is the only one that is different between males and females, and the difference is pretty small. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to look for the armpit, and you're going to look for the nipple of the individual. All right, so if you can't see the nipple, uh, for instance, if they're, uh, they're wearing a sports bra for a female, uh, you're going to uh, estimate where that would be, and you can basically assume that it's in the center of the right side of the chest um, at the bottom of the chest. All right, so either way, again, you're going to look for the armpit and the nipple. For a male, you're going to go halfway between those two, and you're going to do a diagonal fold right there. For a female, you're going to go one-third of the distance down from the armpit towards the nipple. So it's just a little bit uh, less into the chest for a female. You are going to have to move the sports bra over and down a little bit to expose the site. The mid-axillary site is going to be at the level of the xiphoid process of the sternum, so the bottom of the breastbone. You find that and you go around to the side of the individual on the right hand side and then you look for the center of the armpit and you go directly below that. So where the, uh, the lines from the, uh, the bottom of the breastbone and the center of the armpit intersect, that's where the skin fold site is going to be. Typically on a female, this is going to be right underneath where the sports bra strap is. So you just flip up the edge of the strap just a little bit so you can access the proper site uh, to do the skin fold. And this is going to be a uh, vertical skin fold site. So in order to do the subscapular skin fold site, you're going to go to the back of the individual and you're going to look at the right side of their back. All right, and so you're looking for the point of the scapula where you find the, the medial border near the uh, spine and the inferior border of the scapula and you're going to look for that point where they intersect right here. All right, so if you're having a difficulty uh, feeling that border, uh, what you can do is have the, the person take the right arm, put it back behind their back like this, and that's going to force the scapula to, to uh, go out towards you. And, and so you should be able to feel it much more readily. All right, so 
Make sure though that you have the person relax their arm back down and when they relax their arm, you're gonna see the scapula kind of come down. And so you need to just trace with your fingers as that scapula is moving back downward to its resting position. All right, so once you find the appropriate site on the scapula, you're just gonna go about one inch or about two centimeters down and out away from it in a diagonal fashion. And that's where the skin fold site's gonna be. And this is going to be a diagonal skin fold. The superiliac skin fold site is going to be on the right hip of the individual. So what you need to do is you need to palpate and try to find the iliac crest. All right, so once you can trace where the iliac crest is, and sometimes this is difficult and you have to sort of estimate where it should be, but once you can palpate and trace that, um, you're gonna then look for where the front of the armpit is and go directly down from that. So it's gonna be sort of on uh, the, almost on the side of the individual. A lot of people you're gonna see do this far too um, close to the front of the individual. So it's kind of right where the, the front of the person and the side of the person meet is where the skin fold location is gonna be. But again, it's, it's about an inch or so off of the iliac crest in line with the front of the armpit and this is going to be a diagonal fold. The abdominal skin fold site is going to be about one inch or about two centimeters to the right of the belly button and this is going to be a vertical fold. The thigh skin fold is oftentimes the most difficult. The, the fat, the muscle, and the skin just sort of intertwine sometimes there but just do your best to separate them as much as you can and do the pinch. All right so the thigh skin fold site though is going to be halfway between the uh, inguinal crease on the right leg and the patella on the right leg. All right, so the inguinal crease is that crease that your leg makes um, when you lift your knee up. So it's the crease between your torso and your upper thigh, essentially. All right, so again, halfway between those two uh, on the midline of the front of the right leg, and you're gonna be doing a vertical skin fold here. Hi students, and welcome to the instructional video on how to take skin fold measurements. Keep in mind that with our skin folds, not many health club and fitness centers do take skin folds anymore, but they are still, or it still is an important skill to have as a fitness instructor and a personal trainer. We use these particular type of skin fold calipers uh, for here at CIT. Uh, these are the better brand of skin fold calipers, and they simply work on the basis that as you open up the calipers wider, the needle on the actual display here moves around and the thickness of the actual skin fold is measured in mils or millimeters. As you go around and once it does one loop that's 20 mils and it continues to go around and increases up 20 mils for every rotation that you go ahead and do. We're going to go through a number of skin fold measurements today. The main ones being the bicep and tricep, the subscapula, the superiliac, the mid thigh and the calf and the mid abdominal. What we'll go through first is the bicep and tricep. Now with the bicep and tricep, we take all our skin fold measurements on the right hand side of our clients. There is no need to do it on the left and right hand side. All the normative data is based on taking one skin fold measure on the right hand side. Since we have a measurement here from when we're taking Simon's girth measurements, we've got a midpoint. So it's the same midpoint that we're actually using when we go ahead and do our upper arm girth measurements. So we simply measure the difference between the acromion and the electrolong frosser down the bottom here on the elbow, and this is the midpoint. Now, that's the midpoint for the upper arm. What we simply want to do now is rule a line across, <coughs> across from here to the actual bicep. So we'll get Simon just to go to the anatomical position, so the palm facing out. And all we're simply going to do here is take the line across and make an actual cross along the front there on the bicep muscle. We're also going to take a similar line across the back and make a mark on the triceps. Now once we've made those two marks, for the bicep, we want to ensure that when we take the bicep, so I'm going to just get you to turn this way, we want to make sure that when we take the actual bicep, we take a parallel fold or parallel or a vertical fold that's in line with the actual bicep muscle. So where that, skip, where that actual mark we've made, we simply go ahead, pinch the skin. Now making sure that when you pinch the skin you don't grab um, the actual muscle at the same time. It's fairly easy to differentiate between grabbing skin and the layer of fat underneath it and muscle. If you grab muscle you're going to cause a lot of pain. What you can do if you're a bit concerned you can go ahead and grab the actual skin, just do a basic bicep curl. There we go, and down again. If you'd actually grabbed muscle, the skin would have pulled away. We just simply grab the skin, take the skin fold calipers on that point there, take a hand away, 
get a reading off the front here for today. Simon's bicep skin fold is three mils and then simply release it, okay? I always just give it a bit of a rub because it actually makes it feel a little bit better. That's the skin fold measure. The tricep, if we turn Simon around, again, we can actually see definition in Simon's tricep here and we've actually got that cross right in the middle of the uh, where we want to take the skin fold. Same deal, we're taking it down the actual parallel or a parallel to the tricep but also parallel to the, uh, the humerus. We go ahead and grab that skin fold right on where the cross is, take the caliper, Put the calipers on, just do a quick bicep curl for me Simon, just halfway, that's it, and down, okay, and then we take the measure, which is 5.2. Take it off, give it a rub, and we're all done for that one there. Okay, moving on, we're going to do Simon's uh, suprailiac skin fold. Now, the suprailiac is located on the, it's actually the, the, the top of the actual bone on the hip, just down the, around, around the waist. When we go ahead and take this particular girth measurement, we are going to go ahead and obviously inform the client that we're going to be taking a girth measurement around the actual uh, waist region. What we need to do is sometimes you may need to ask the client to bring their pants down just a little bit so you can get good access to the superiliac. Now we can see the superiliac here because we have a line of muscle that sits on the top there. It's also very easy to palpate the actual superiliac. So I can find Simon's superiliac quite easily there. For the Male superiliac. The male superiliac is roughly, or well, it is 10 mils above the iliac crest. So I simply would take my tape measure, find the top of the iliac crest, and I'm going to make a mark 10 mils or one centimeter above the iliac crest. When we go ahead and take the iliac crest skin fold, we simply go ahead and grab above it like so. The female iliac crest skin fold is 30 mils above the iliac crest. So for Simon, we've got it 10 mils, the female is 30 mils above. Okay, we want to make sure that we take the skin fold in the same line as the actual iliac crest. So where that mark is, we simply grab the skin fold, apply the calipers, take the reading, which is four, and then release and rub off. Okay. The next one we're going to do is the subscapular. The subscapular skin fold is on the back of the client. So what we'll get do, uh, Simon to do for us today is to actually take his shirt off and have his back, back, back facing towards us. Now keeping in mind when we are going ahead and doing skin folds, you have to make sure that the client is very comfortable with having these taken. Um, because this is an instructional video, we've got Simon to take his shirt off. For all, just about all of your clients, it's very unlikely that you'll ask your clients to take their shirt off for you. Um, what you can normally do is simply raise the shirt up, find the site and take the measurement. Okay, what we're looking for here, the subscapular, as the name implies, it is sub or underneath the actual scapular bone. So what we've got to try and do is find Simon's scapula. A couple of ways that we can do that, we can simply palpate and find what we call the inferior angle of the actual scapula. And we can actually find it, so Simon's scapula goes along here and then comes down and underneath, and that's the inferior angle of the actual scapula. Now, what we need to do is we need to measure 10 mils below that particular point, and that will locate our skin fold. So 10 mils below, which is just there. And once we've got that mark made, position ourselves so we're comfortable. So I'll move myself across. And again, we want to sort of go at the same angle as that inferior angle of the actual scapula. Grab the skin fold. Take the measurement, which today is 7.6, and then take it off and rub off just like so. Okay, the next skin fold that we're going to take is the mid-abdominal. After the mid-abdominal, we'll do the mid-thigh and also the calf. Now, the mid-abdominal uh, skin fold measurement, all we simply have to do is find the umbilicus, which is not difficult on anyone, and it is roughly 30 mils across from the umbilicus. So taking our tape measure, 30 mils or 3 centimetres, make the mark just like so. Now, when we're going ahead and doing the uh, mid-abdominal 
skin fold, it's important to keep in mind that it, depending on the type, the, the, the size of the client that you're actually doing and the way the body fat is distribu distributed, it may be easier to take either a horizontal or a vertical skin fold. Procedures do say to take a horizontal skin fold, so we'll do that today because Simon's very lean. So what we're going to do is simply on that point there, we'll take the skin fold, try and get a good grip, come up and underneath, take the actual skin fold right there. So for Simon today, it's 22.6, uh, and then we just simply release it off. So that is your mid-abdominal. Now for the mid-thigh, what we're going to do, because we have the mark on Simon's leg previously from his girth measurement for his mid-thigh on the front here, so that's the midpoint between the iliac crest and the top of the patella, all we're simply going to do now is make sure, just get you to angle yourself back this way Simon, we want to make sure that that's pretty much in the middle of his actual thigh, and I might just make it there because that's a little bit more medial to the middle of his thigh. The thigh can be very difficult to take skin folds on, particularly in females. Females have a tendency to put more body fat on their hips and their thighs, and it can be quite difficult to do a skin fold measurement here. If you do find it hard to do this actual skin fold on clients, do not bother with it. It's not worth the pain that it actually can, can cause. Okay, so for Simon today, all we're simply going to do, we've got our skin fold there. We're simply going to pinch off the skin. Simon's got nice lean legs, so it's not difficult to actually pinch the skin off. Simply go ahead. Take the skin fold, today it's seven, okay, and then rubbing off just like so. The final skin fold that we're going to do today is the calf. Now, again, the same rules apply to our girth measurements for the calf as they do for the skin folds. We already have a half or a, mid, a midpoint for, uh, for Simon's uh, calf here. So what we're going to do, because it's on the other side here, we actually take this, the, um, the skin fold measure on the lateral surface of the actual, of the, um, of the calf muscle. So what we're going to do, just use a tape measure, wrap the tape measure around, ensure that it is horizontal when we take it. We take it on this inside surface of the actual calf there, put our cross on the actual, on, 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 the, on the skin fold side where we want to take it. We're taking again a, uh, a vertical um, skin fold, simply grabbing the skin fold like so, taking the skin fold, taking the, re the reading of 5.2 and then releasing and rubbing off. And that wraps up all of our skin fold measurements for our instructor course.